Joe. Chief Justice and the Associate Justices of the Supreme Court of the United States. Oh, yay, oh, yay, oh, yay. All persons having business before the Honorable, the Supreme Court of the United States, are admonished to draw. Guess what? I smoke by the hoes. If you niggas know that it's potent, the rap game need J. Yeah, you know I ain't joking. Looking like I chose the Pope. You could tell that I'm smoking. Floating like a UFO. I get high when I'm token. And don't act like you ain't know. I don't supply when I'm toting. Dressed like the CEO. I be fly when I'm showing. And if you looking for the one who make the laws, I'm the culprit. Really? I make the laws like I'm there... Congress. My bitch, she flaw. All right, Jay, how are you? man where are you most importantly of course i'm doing good i am in uh southern california palmdale to be exact my hometown how are the lockdowns there right now are you affected as as your life been changed at all is it all across california how are the lockdowns where you are right now um well fortunately it hasn't put me out of job out of a job but i know many who have gone jobless or have seen their hours cut um Personally, I just can't get drunk in my uh, favorite bar's patio, which is really annoying to me. Um, <clears throat> but, you know, we're just pushing through it. It sucks. It really does suck. You know, I almost wa I walked into the store the other day, like, without a mask, just because I forget sometimes, you know. And did anything happen? Uh, yeah, I was told to put a mask on. <laughs> I find a lot of the time it's more, it, it can be about how you carry yourself, at least here where I am. Uh, if you just walk into a Walmart and you go and do your business, you don't really go close to people and go to self checkout, you'll probably have no one speak to you. Right. But if you, if you're moseying on about doing your groceries, you're going to get looks. I've personally have not been told to put on a mask. <laughs> yeah. I've done it several times. The worst I've gotten is a lady telling me I was going against, going against the lines in the lane. And she's like, oh my you're God. supposed to be walking the other way. <laughs> I hate that. They have a direction in which you can shop now. It's so stupid. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. So I think I became aware of you probably around, within the last year, probably closer to like eight or nine months. Um, and you had, a lot, you had fewer followers then. Is there anything that you, th that you can pinpoint to which increased your following uh, on social media? Um, I feel like maybe just breaking like 10,000 followers. I feel like followers are a lot like money. Like it's easier to get more if you already have some. So I feel like, like once I kind of hit that 10 K threshold, that was it. And it just started going up from there. Yeah. It's, it's pretty interesting how a lot of that stuff happens. And, uh, I don't know. It's really hard to transfer followers from one platform to another. So I tell people yeah, that, uh, that uh, to, to get it while you can on one platform, because you don't know one day you could just be waking up and, and Twitter has banned you or demonetized you. Yeah, that happened to me. Twitter, Twitter banned me for like 17 days because they thought I was a fake Russian bot. Was there any evidence for that? No, we just I got mass reported. So I think they have like a system where if you're reported X amount of times, that's it. Oh, and they didn't have to point to any sort of tweets that you made at all. Nope, it just said you're uh you're like uh suspended for violating our rules surrounding spam and platform manipulation. Well, that's good. That's what happens. I feel like YouTube I definitely know for sure that they do this, but they don't give any explanation. There's no there's no debate about it. It's just what what they say goes. It's pretty pretty one-sided that way. Yeah. Now, were you rapping before you got into all of this? How did you become politically involved and and how did you start rapping? Um, yeah, I've been making rap music for a long time. I recorded my first rap song, um, 11 years ago on like a guitar hero microphone. I uploaded it to YouTube <laughs> as a joke. I, uh, cause I used to make YouTube videos when I was probably like 12 or 13 and one day my camera broke. So I was like, well, I need content for my subscribers. So I just, I just did a little freestyle rap and, um, it was just fun and games. And, um, I had this song in high school that kind of got like popularity locally. So I was like, you know what, maybe I could just start rapping. So, um, my freshman year of college, I like dropped like my first full length album. So I've been taking it serious maybe for about five years now, five or six. And was it a conscious decision to start making music about politics or that involved politics? Or is that just sort of how it happens? It's what's on your mind. Um, I guess it, it was it was a decision just because I feel like it's what I'm 
most involved with and it's like these are my interests you know so it's easier to rap about the things you're interested in rather than if i was putting on some front or rapping about this life that i didn't live so i'm i feel like i'm inherently a political person so it just kind of uh shine through in my raps now have you faced any backlash from either community whether it's uh i don't know maybe some conservatives that follow you on twitter they don't like your lyrics or maybe some rappers who don't like your politics. Have you had any crossover negatively in that way? Um, surprisingly, it's like like a lot of people on the right they embrace me. You know, I, I like I kind of I used to think that they were just these old and boring type of people who would want nothing to do with rap music. But um, the people have responded pretty well. A lot of the hate does come from come from uh, people on the left mostly. I think over my tweets rather than like what's actually in my lyrics. Okay, yeah, because I was listening to Culprit, I think it was, and I'm sure there's a lot of uh, <laughs> a lot of the uh, neocons or something that are oh, he's talking about marijuana and he's yeah. talking about scantily clad women. But I think that's just how it. I think I don't think people can pretend anymore that there's like you know like I'm only in politics or I'm only right. in this. I think it has to be more about people just being normal people and talking about yeah, politics. Just, like, that's, just being yourself and kind of remaining authentic. Um, authentic. That's it, really. Yeah, I did one of these with the uh, YBN Drippy, one of the YBN kids. He's pro he right. he's uh, and he messaged me within a day. He said that I won't say which page, but a huge, a really big rap page with uh, I think twelve million followers, t around ten million followers, messaged him about him talking about saying he supported Trump. And and it was that fast. Jesus. And, he, <laughs> and they, him in check. they said, what you say, boy? <laughs> and I told him, I'm like, you're people are gonna try to cancel you just for saying yeah. for saying this. And he's like, Oh, I don't think that'll happen. And it happened. <laughs> it within, happens every day. It happened within one day. So about these lockdowns, are you an open up everything right away guy? Are you uh we we need masks and vaccines? What is your stance like overall on all this? I think we should just uh Go back to life how it was about 12 months ago, you know? And when people are sick, you just stay inside. When when you're sick, you stay home. You don't go out. Um, if you've been around somebody who's sick, you might want to stay home. But I don't think there's any, like, rational basis for locking down the entire country. Now, how long do you think this is going to happen? Because I'm reading a thing from NBC today that says... Here's the title. At the current rate, it would take almost 10 years to vaccinate enough Americans to get the pandemic under control. Now, I've heard people say oh that it's 70% uh, vaccination rate. You need to get the herd mentality th or the whatever it's called, herd yeah, mentality, herd immunity. Herd immunity. <laughs> yeah. That's a whole different thing. Her herd immunity. And I felt like a month ago when they started talking about rolling out the vaccines is that that was going to be the next thing is we can't do anything until everybody gets it everybody how long do you think this it. is gonna have how long do you think uh, this has to last well i mean i hope it wouldn't last until maybe summer 2021 but if we're letting the people who are distributing the vaccines tell us when we can go back outside it's never gonna happen i don't know i think like i think fauci says something like 2024 i don't know I, it, if it was up to them they would have years of this type of madness well, what do you think is the source of this? Because a lot of, admittedly so, a lot of the conspiracies around this have come true about vaccines, about masks, about businesses yeah. not being able to reopen. How far do you think you're willing to go? And what do you think the whole reason is behind it? And then I'll, I'll say what I think. I don't know. I think it's all about control. I think it's about... Um... I think it's about transferring wealth from the middle class to the upper class. You know, they close down small businesses. You can't eat at your local restaurants. But if you want to go to Target, Walmart or shop on Amazon, that's fine. Um, and I feel like it's all about kind of keeping keep people complacent because the masks at first they said the masks didn't work. And then they said all of a sudden masks do work. And I think just the act of like masking an entire population is just humiliating and almost emasculating. Yeah. I, as time has gone on, I've tend, tended to lean more towards a, this was like a big play for big businesses. A bit of what you alluded to there was 
Walmart's making money, Amazon's making money, Target's making money, and then all these huge pharmaceutical companies have found a way to get billions and billions of dollars of contracts uh, really quickly. And then on the side, you've got people who probably are in bed with China. This is more of an unproven theory, but everything else has come true, so why not? (laughs) Yeah. That why not help China's struggling economy? They've been bombasted under Trump. He's, He's... done the trade wars as they call them and and this is a sort of thing where china has this illness floating around they don't particularly care particularly particularly it's hard to word to say for some reason care about their population so they're they're fine with a few hundred thousand or millions of people getting sick they're back up and running in a couple months once the attention's back off of them it kind of worked out in my opinion pretty well for china i mean there's that famous viral video of them having this giant uh, music festival in wuhan and i I saw a tweet earlier today i think they said that uh china was one of the only countries to have like growth during this pandemic it's funny how that works isn't it and there's another report coming out from i think it was national review i have that one open somewhere as well it's entitled "All Major Western News Outlets uh, Take Private Dinner Sponsored Trips from Chinese Propaganda hmm. Fronts," and that includes CNN, New York Times, Washington Post, MSN, and MSNBC. They're going to these uh, state-sponsored dinners through a. Uh, it's an initiative called Tung Chi Hua. It's a government-backed organization. Yeah. So it kind of reminds me. I don't know how much you were into this uh, during the Clinton email days. It seems like 25 years ago. But that was sort of the same thing, that they were taking direction from the Clinton campaign and the Democrats on what they should put on TV, what graphics to use, what stories to run with. Yeah, straight up do propaganda. See, do you see similarities coming? Where, where do you think uh, the Democrats and the media line up here? Do you think it's more the progressive media, or do you think they line up more with the old crooked Democrats? I think definitely uh, Crooked Dems, they're probably getting a lot of their information straight up from the Communist Party of China, you know, because I feel like these days the media is just running straight Chinese propaganda. Are there any examples of that that come to mind? Um, Just posts about like, um, you know, the glories of the Chinese economy or like what you were saying and how the Wuhan, they're partying and we're just locked up. Now, that was something that came up around here, I think, four or five months ago, that the Chinese uh, travel boards and agricultural boards, they were running ads in, I think it was Washington Post and a few other ones, and then also in Canada. Do you think that's okay? Do you think to just that they should be able to run advertisements, or do you are you more of the type of person who says, this is pretty much our enemy, we shouldn't be, lo- shouldn't be allowing them to publish anything here? Um, so, I mean, I think they are our enemy, but I don't know if that's like officially been recognized. So until that's like officially declared, I don't think we shouldn't kind of stop them from doing that. It's, I think it's all about just informing the people and recognizing when what you're reading is likely Chinese propaganda or what you're seeing is likely not the truth. Yeah. They, the, in most instances they do label, label it pretty clearly, but I just wanted to ask from like an ethics point of view, um, now, when you think about the election, and there's this big... Or by the way, are you going to this big event on Saturday? That's pretty far from you, I know. Um, what's on... I'm going to the thing on the 6th. Yeah, I think that's Saturday, isn't it? Yeah, no, it's, a, it's on a, like a, a Tuesday, I think. It's on a Wednesday. Oh, you're right. It's next Wednesday. I don't know. I just yeah. assumed that it was going to be another I, mega march on no, Saturday. It's a, I think it's a freaking work day for Congress. That's why it's on a, on a uh, Saturday, Wednesday, yeah. But I'm going. Yeah, I'll be there. And what do you plan on doing there? Just getting footage? Are you? What are you going to do? Um, I don't know. I'm just going to go out there and yell, we want Trump. Fight for Trump. <laughs> <laughs> There's going to be a... Uh, I went to uh, the, like the first march they had. Uh, I think it was in the end of November. And it was a really fun time. You know, We were just out there marching up and down the streets of Washington, showing support for Donald Trump. Met a lot of kind people. Met a lot of people I follow on the internet. So it's cool. It's always like a nice time to just... I feel like those type of events are a safe space for people like us because we just <laughs> go in there, we speak our mind, and we don't get attacked, and it's just nice. Yeah, that's why I'm so lucky that I have a job at a, comp- like at a news company that doesn't... Uh, like I can say anything I want. I, I thought those days were over. 
I can make any <laughs> right. jokes I want. I can make fun of my friends there. Yeah. And I thought that was the whole reason I started doing writing and, and YouTube and stuff was because I was like, I will not be accepted into any <laughs> corporate environment, yeah. Yeah. but uh, there's got to be a stage there. Why don't you, uh, I saw Bryson at the last one. Uh, why I don't know. You, yeah. Why don't you so try to get up there? Stage, there wasn't a stage at the first one that I went to. And then the second one that I didn't go to, I saw the stage. So I don't know. I might finagle my way onto the stage. I mean, you should, you got that song with anomaly. That's really good. I like that song. Yeah. Thank you. Um, thank you. And, and yeah, you gotta you gotta just push your way on stage there. I think hopefully there won't be any violence. I mean, there will be after once the sun yeah, goes after, down. After hours yeah. for sure. When Antifa comes in and and the cops just kind of let Antifa do their thing. So what do you think is going to happen with the election? I mean, time has. I mean, they trust the plan, but we've got like twenty three days left here. I, yeah, I have no idea. I think Trump's going to win, but I'm not entirely too sure how he's going to do it. I don't know how he's going to pull it off, but my gut tells me that he's going to pull it off. I mean, the worst thing about it, I think, is I have friends who don't really care for Trump. And if he's watching, you know who I'm talking to. <laughs> and when we talk about election fraud, he says, well, ha- well, there's no election fraud. The courts haven't, sh- haven't shown I, anything. Oh my God. And it's like they've got it's gotten to the point where it's it, it feels like it's gone so far up the chain that if, if the courts aren't even willing to see it what's your take on this are we lacking some sort of uh judicial process where it's not getting presented or are we just having people that say we we can't show it i mean this thing just came out in pennsylvania where biden's got two hundred thousand more votes than people that are registered yeah, I don't know. I mean, we see the evidence every day. People tweet out the links. They tweet out video clips of them bringing out hidden ballots when people are gone late at night. Um, but I feel like a lot of the courts in the country are just kind of afraid of having the like the perspective that they're a political body or like politically motivated. So they try to remain impartial. But I think that does more damage than getting involved because if there is actual fraud, which I think there is, then you're just co-signing it by not agreeing to at least hear it. Cause a lot of the, um, a lot of the cases end up getting rejected for like, not on the merits of the case, but for procedural issues or like standing or like who can technically sue or not. Nobody's ever heard the physical case. They haven't brought in the actual evidence. Yeah, and these fact checks, man, where they say uh, it wasn't actually a box, it was a or it wasn't a briefcase, it was a box and stuff like <laughs> yeah. that. And and these people weren't actually thrown out. Their shift just ended. That's like it's all these semantics they play. And I think it's a real shame that none of this video, in a lot of cases, doesn't just get played on on CNN. And I, I don't know if I expect it from MSNBC. They're basically, I don't know if, if I can put the, who's more crazy, the young Turks or MSNBC. Who do you think? <laughs> they're, they're both up there. I don't know. I like to call MSNBC MSDNC. That's my favorite. It's a classic. I would hope that CNN has enough dignity within their ranks that they would say, let's show this stuff. Lose that. But hope. They, <laughs> I used to have hope for Jake Tapper. I used to have hope for Jake yeah. Tapper, but he just pretends, I, in my opinion, by following him on Twitter, he just pretends that certain things don't exist. It's sort of like this. 100%. Now, uh, we see people saying uh, the red states should succeed and form their own, <laughs> form their own country. <laughs> How do you feel about that? Is that even realistic uh, at all? Nah, I don't think that's realistic. That's a pipe dream. I don't know. And I wouldn't I wouldn't want to see that happen. We're the United States. We're not the seceded states. It would it would be California, Oregon, and Washington, I think. That's all that would go with them. New York's <laughs> yeah. too far away. Yep. All those all those northeastern states. Why are so many of the northeastern states? Tell me this if you know. Why are they so liberal? Where did that come from? Yet they have very few gun laws. Probably because they're closest to China. I don't know. <laughs> nah, I don't, that, is, that is a weird phenomenon. I'm not sure, though. Oh, man. Uh, I'm looking around, and I see a lot of uh, younger, uh, not just rappers, but a lot of younger people. Not really. It, it's this uh, sort of like a black pilling. I don't know if you're familiar with that, where it's, yeah. there's just no hope. It's not. It's The internet obviously favors Trump. But on on the one side, like you could have like twenty five percent liberal kids on the internet, 
25 or 50% Trump. And then there's another 25% that just don't give a shit. It seems like yeah. they don't care either way. Do you find this is happening? How do you convince these people? Do you think, or is it even worth it? Um, I do feel like there are a lot of young people who are just kind of apathetic and they don't really care for either side. I don't know what's going to kind of wake them up. I think if they don't see the Dems trying to steal an election, then they're not really going to wake up anytime soon because I feel like that's the biggest uh, front on our entire Republic, really attempting to steal an election. Even if you don't like Trump, you should see these regularities for Biden. The fact that Trump won 18 out of 19 bellwether counties, he won Florida and Ohio and other things like that. You should be able to say, you know what? something might be a little off here. And if that doesn't wake them up, then I'm not too sure what will. I think one of the best things to say to people is that Biden beat Obama and by a lot somehow. (laughs) And then (laughs) the idea that mail-in ballots or how everybody did it is like every, like so many people got multiple ballots and there's so much ballot harvesting. There's so many things. But I think if you tell people that Biden not only got more votes than Obama, he got the most votes of any candidate ever. Yeah, I mean, but they always they always seem to have this fail safe. Like, of course, everybody hates Trump, so they yeah, had to go... exactly. They're like, oh, <laughs> duh, everybody hates Trump. But all of a sudden, people just felt like voting, and when they voting blocks that never do, all of right. a sudden feel like voting. Now, is there is there something we can point to uh, in a Biden administration that we are? we we like that we are okay with or are we just hoping that things sort of stay the same as as silly as that may sound i don't know i can't think of any positives from a potential biden administration (laughs) the only thing i don't know the only thing that i can think would be a positive is that his administration would be so bad that it would wake people up you know and they would be like hey well that trump guy wasn't so crazy well, the thing about that is I think a lot of the, the far left people or even the far right, if, if you want to take them into consideration, they know that Biden isn't good. They know that the Clintons and the Obamas yeah. are not good. They just think that Trump's a fascist. So I think that this is just more of an appropriate means to an end for them, especially like the Antifa kids right. don't know what they're doing. I mean, they're, they, they just want Trump out and then yeah. they or know that Biden that. sucks. <laughs> Uh, I still want a shirt that just has an orange with Trump's hair on it that says <laughs> orange man bad. I still want that. Speaking of uh, of kids, though, um, what are your feelings on like uh, Young Americans Foundation and PragerU and uh, there's another one, Turning Point USA is the one. I, yeah. I, I feel what's your like, opinion um, on these? Are they too? Are do you? Th- are they good? Are they cringy? Tell me your honest opinion on it. I feel like they're like basic bitch conservatism and it's, it's cool. Cause it, no, it's totally cool because everybody needs to go through their basic bitch conservative uh, phase, especially if you're, they do good work targeting young people on college students or young people on college campuses, you know? So a lot of them are majority liberal. So if you want to wake them up, you gotta, you gotta give them the, the broad topics. And I feel like that's what those groups do. They kind of just introduce them. And then, um, and then it's up to them to kind of get into the, the more tuned levels of conservatism and not really recognizing that socialism sucks as, as much of a nice catchphrase that is, it doesn't really move any needles. No, that's a good point that you do need to go through that sort of phase. I'm sure like at my old job, this is three or four years ago now, maybe not that long. I don't know. Three years ago. I remember um, somebody, one of my coworkers, an older lady, probably in her fifties was saying that her 14 year old son was obsessed with Ben Shapiro videos (laughs) Yeah, and, 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 and think about it. Think about him. What you will. It's more. It's sort of like you graduate from Ben Shapiro and you graduate yeah. from these other things when you're you're given straight facts, and then all of a sudden you start to form your own opinions around it. Now, who is there? Any commentators, writers, street interviewers? Who are your favorites? Who are the people that you watch? Um, honestly, I don't watch a lot. Most of the time, it's just like tweets that i read but i'm a i'm a big fan of the hotep's been told you podcast with uncle hotep and hotep jesus that's probably like the only podcast i watch religiously um i'm a huge fan of uh jorge ventura he's a great journalist one of my good friends um that's probably it honestly Fleckus, of me- course Fleckus does good work oh you gotta love Fleckus. i feel like he's the og of all of the yeah 
Yeah. Um, let me ask you with the Hotep stuff, though. I know who Hotep Jesus is. I followed him for, for quite some time, watched him on Rogan and everything. How much of it is like is like race centric? Because I know they, they talk about uh, s- stuff that's not good for black people, stuff that is good for black people. And to, to an extent, I agree that you've got to do stuff that benefits your community. But I fi- I just, and I could be wrong. I could be more focused on this than they are. But mm-hmm. it does c- end up being weird to me when it's, things start to become like, about my race because like ti does that and ice cube do that yeah, and yeah. um who's the socialist guy um killer mike he's so about yep. just benefiting black people am i wrong about that is do they not talk, focus on that as much what's the explanation there that you can give me um i guess it is like a black centric movement but to me it's more um it's more about making your own life better rather than kind of like implementing solutions just for like the black community. So like I'm a black person and if I do things to change my life, then of course, like it's going to benefit the community as a whole. So it's kind of like, it's a little bit of both. I feel like. And how, and how much of it is centered on like, in, in my opinion, when I started looking into politics myself, all the things that I found historically, whether it's in movies or in pe- rappers talking about in music, cause I've been listening to rap since I was like seven years old. The stuff I look into, it's mainly Democrats. Now, am I wrong about that? I'm sure there's there's terrible Republican uh, states and cities in the South. But when I look at stuff like projects yeah. and uh, and drugs and Planned Parenthood, if if we can X out the CIA involvement in, in some of this, <laughs> yeah. Am I right to say that most of this stuff comes from Democrats? Because I feel like the history yeah, given we, is completely backwards. Like, like, yeah, a lot of I feel like a lot of the problems our communities faces is due to the fact that we've been voting democrat for god knows how long it's like being democrat is almost the default state if you're black in america which is crazy was there a point in your life where you looked into the a a lot of the stuff that people say like the kkk is republican and and the party switch and and his and and the and who freed the slaves who gave the civil right uh who gave the right to vote the civil rights act it was there an age or a time where you looked into that and it wasn't in line with what you were told um yeah i guess kind of when i like woke up and when i walked away from the democratic plantation (laughs) put on your walk away (laughs) shirt (laughs) yeah brandon strock will be um, proud yeah for me i was i was a dem up until uh college college turned me conservative can you believe that or not Um, how did that happen so I took um, my first semester, I take this Africana studies English class and they indoctrinated me with all the critical race theory talking points. You know, I wanted to end the white supremacist, capitalist, patriarchal society of America. And Powerful, then my very yes. next semester, I took intro to logic and that kind of opened me up to a new way of thinking, critical thinking. And I was like, wait, hold up. This is crazy. And this was, um, I just turned 18 when I took that intro to logic class too. So I was old enough to vote and I was like, all right, well, if this is going to be my first election to vote in, let me check out both sides. And I just felt like the right side was a little bit more common sense to me. Now, is there anything, anything specifically at the time that was on the ballot that didn't make sense to you? Was there, like, what major issue? Was it guns? Was it abortion? Was it immigration? Was there any major issue that re- really got you thinking? Um, for me, it's probably the fake news and the media. Because, um, like, to me, what's most important is culture. And I recognize that they have a grasp on culture. And they can mm. kind of uh, just force feed anything they want into the culture by means of their uh, TV and radio and film and internet studios and stuff. So um, when Trump came along and he, he kind of took the fake news and flipped it on CNN and called them fake news. That was when I knew he was the guy. Yeah. Same thing for me. When I, 2015, 2016, when I spent the whole, uh, the whole election season, researching stuff and then turning on the TV to see what they said. It's not even that they're presenting <laughs> CNN in particular. It's not that they're presenting something from their own point of view. They're pretending that the other point of view doesn't even exist. Yeah. Everyone believes this. This is common sense. And if you don't believe this, then you're weird. It's the same thing with, with, uh, with movies and not so much anymore. I'll give it that same thing with TV shows and late night talk shows 
and like yes. the pop it's culture like just clones of each other and it, uh, a snapchat story push it's like the other so again it's gotten better because they can't hide anymore but back in 2016 2015 it was like the other opinions don't even exist and particularly when still to this day when i'm finding out about people that have 500,000 followers 2 million followers that are followed by people that i know and i've never heard of them before right. it still happens to this day because it's just you've got to you've got to keep them out of sight out of mind do you think that's true yeah, I definitely think that's true. It's a crazy, crazy world we live in. All right, I'll ask you one more fun question before I let you go. Favorite rapper, current and all time? Um, uh, or you can a- give a top three if you want. Damn, okay. Um, right now, my favorite rapper is Eminem. And I feel like that could also be like an all-time answer too because he's got great all-time music. Um. From like the new generation, I really like Comethazine. He's probably my my favorite rapper for the under twenty five group. Um, historically, one of my favorite rappers has been Tyler the Creator. Oh, so you're weird, is what you're telling me? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm. Dead. So you like? I one of my best friends is obsessed. With, it's always been a huge <laughs> Tyler and uh, whatever their group, Odd Future fan. Yep. And I have to say, the other day I listened to. I watched one music video. It was a 10 minute music video. I forget what it's called, but it's um, all of them. Were they all rapping? Yes, yes. Oh. And I liked it. But I do <laughs> think Tyler the Creator is weird. But I, yeah, I like the fact that he'll say anything. And then um, I guess like older hip hop, one of my favorite artists is Prodigy from Mob Deep. Nice, nice. See, I've been just. Kanye, of course, Kanye's up there, but he's like in his, he's in his own world. You can't really rank <laughs> Kanye next to other people. It's just not fair. I surprisingly enough just started going back and listening to all the solo albums from the members of Wu Tang. I feel like yeah. I've missed twenty five years of my life. There's, I barely got into Wu Tang. Um, maybe a couple years ago when they had their uh, series on Hulu, and so I watched the series and I was like, wait a minute, let me listen to their music. Method Man's first album is amazing. Jizz's first album is amazing. I just I just can't get enough of it. And I also listen to a lot of Burner. I don't know if you know who that is. He's from San Francisco. You don't? Oh, he's from probably I don't know where in California these two cities are located, but B E R N E R. <laughs> he is a guy who used to. He's one of the first like legal marijuana distributors in California. And he got signed by Wiz Khalifa and he turned this into a rap career. And now he's got one of the biggest legal marijuana companies in the world. That's crazy. That's That's crazy. Well, that's just my factoid. If you ever heard of the brand called cookies, uh, that's, that's his company. Oh shit. I'm really promoting him here. He should pay me for this. I wish, (laughs) but it was good (laughs) talking. It was good talking to you, Jay. Is there anything else you want to say? Say it now. Um, nah, thank you for having me. If you're listening, follow me on Twitter at Sir Hottest. Uh, check out my music, Patriot J. You can search that everywhere you listen to music Spotify, Apple, SoundCloud. Um, yeah, that's it. Yeah, I got it on Spotify. Gotta have Spotify, it's my one of my yeah. favorite things. I, I love Spotify. I used to use Apple Music for like five years and then I converted and I'm never going back. <laughs> Convert or die. All right, <laughs> all right, thanks, man. Have a great day. All right, you too, Andrew. Thanks. That's what I smoke by the hoes if you niggas know that it's potent The rap game need Jay, yeah you know I ain't joking Looking like I chose the Pope, you could tell that I'm smoking Floating like a UFO, I get high when I'm token And don't act like you